Hello again guys and welcome back to another Big Al Devlin video here at the House of Devlin and now this particular video is what I hope to be a quick video, an introductory video into the god called Odin. Um, I have done two previous videos on Odin but they are very detailed videos and so for some of you they may not be appropriate because or you may find it boring um, even if you are interested in the subject so I thought what I'd do is I will have amongst this in this playlist a series of videos yes that look into things in more detail detail and discuss the reasons why certain things happen but I also have a few videos like this which are quick easy to listen to videos um, that give you the basics of what you need to know about whatever subject I'm talking about and as I say today's video is Odin now I do have the tendency to go slightly off topic especially when I'm not working from but well, I never work from a script but when I'm not working from notes with bullet points telling me which what things I need to talk about and what order I need to talk about them in when I'm just doing it off the top of my head like I am now I do tend to go that way and then this way and then eventually get to the point uh, so do be bear with me if I get off off topic I hope still it will entertain and potentially hopefully even educate you um, but please also feel free to educate educate me I want this to be almost like a chat down the pub it's as simple as that. These kind of videos, almost like a chat, same with all the videos really, but a chat down the pub where you're just like, hey, you're having a chat, you're having a talk, um, and it's a two-way thing. At the moment, I feel I'm, I'm obviously doing a monologue, I'm filming on the video, but I want you guys to put whatever you want in the comments. If you feel like I said something is wrong, or if it is 100% wrong, put, please put it in. Or if you agree, please agree and tell me the reasons why. Or if you want to expand on something that I've said, or even add to something completely random, just as a random discussion point, which might spark off an idea for another video, feel free to put that in there also. Now, I've wasted two minutes already on the introduction, and I'm speaking very quickly to get in within that two minutes. It's more like probably four minutes worth of talking. But now I'll calm down, <sighs> breathe, and uh, start telling you just the basics about the god Odin. Now, Odin was the king of the gods amongst Nordic paganism. Nordic paganism is, of course, the religion that I'm talking about that exists within Scandinavia from sort of Ice Age onwards. Okay, up to the point when, when, when the Scandinavian countries became Christian. Okay, it's otherwise known as Odinism. Um, Asatru, I believe it's called also. It's got a variety of different names, as does a lot of things. That's been around for a long time. Okay, now it's very similar to Celtic paganism in many respects because it has the same gods, but there are subtle differences. And one of the major differences, and I mean this is a major difference, is that amongst Celtic paganism, the king of their gods is a god called Tyr, which does exist, is a god that exists within um, within Nordic paganism also, um, but he's a much, uh, he's still a very powerful god and he plays a major role within Ragnarok, which is the Viking apocalypse, but he has a much lesser role to, uh, to play um, than he does obviously being the king of the gods, like he is in Celtic paganism. I have no doubt also amongst the different variations of Celtic paganism that there were even in more differences as well, because of course, when we talk about the Celts, the Celts, inhabited a huge area, okay, basically the entirety of Europe pretty much up until the Romans came, okay, so they were the Gauls, for example, the Iberians, the proto-Germanic tribes, the Britannic tribes, they, and each one of them, and the Picts and, and, and all that, they would have all worshipped the same gods, but there would have been subtle differences between each of them especially the names of the gods because of course they all spoke slightly different languages or completely different languages in certain cases so um there were, and you know there would be different stories and there would be you know variations for the stories and that so what i'm telling you is just the version that i know okay the version of nordic pagan which is nordic paganism and so if you are celtic please tell me tell me because uh, uh, i'm half Cel uh, you know well my i've dual heritage on my mother's side i'm purely celtic on my father's side i'm a mixture celtic and nordic so um even though i'm i consider myself a nordic paganist um obviously i do have a lot of celtic in me also and so i would love to love 
love, love, love to learn more about my um, ancestors' people because I take a bit of both religions and marry it together for my own personal belief system. So I actually don't fully follow Odinism. I follow a mix of Celtic paganism and Odinism also, or Nordic paganism, okay? A little mix of both of them, okay? Um, but nonetheless, um, my major framework to what I believe in and what I'm discussing here, as I say, is Nordic paganism. And in Nordic paganism, Odin is by... <laughs> by no doubt, the king of the gods. And he's the king of the gods, not because he's the strongest or the most powerful, that goes to four, okay? Um, no, he's the king of the gods because he's the wisest of gods and he seeks wisdom above and beyond pretty much everything and anything else because he believes that knowledge um, and the knowledge of what's coming especially will allow him potentially to change things in his favor now he also is a god of really dual personality in many respects okay um, in contrast for example to Tyr who as I say is the king of the gods amongst the mass majority of Celtic paganists uh, belief systems um, Tyr was a very noble very just very 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 good god in many respects he was a typical god that you that would kings would worship for example because he represented what would be a perfect king in many respects Odin didn't do that Odin yes he was a very good king he ruled very well um, and he ruled within Asgard obviously pretty much towing the line but he would break the rules from time to time but he still believed that the end justified the means um, so he would achieve whatever he needed to achieve regardless of the consequences okay as long as the outcome was what he desired then it wouldn't really matter to him what was sacrificed who was sacrificed uh, or anything along those lines and you'll hear more about that um uh when I do the story videos, okay? But for example, he's also not actually afraid to sacrifice parts of himself or even his own life in many respects to achieve what he wants. I mean, he takes his own right eye out just for the ability to um, uh, practice, uh, to, to have access to cedar magic, for example, which is the ability to sort of perceive um, and try to alter fate through 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 magic and shamanistic rituals so you know <laughs> which by the way was a magic uh which um cedar magic typically was not practiced by males males could practice it but if they did they were f they're seen as effeminate and they were ostracized from the society and it was the same amongst the gods as it was humans because humans also practice this kind of magic um it was a magic for women and women only uh he did not care he did not give one flying shit what the rest of everyone felt. He wanted that knowledge and he traded his eye for it. Uh, and so that is why Odin in many respects is such a cool god. Is he, he's, he does not live by the rules, he creates the rules. And that what is doesn't necessarily make a good king <laughs> in many respects, because a king must be a good example. If everyone created their own rules, it'd be ultimately chaos. But he does it in a way that, because he's so wise, he does it in a way that always is more constructive than it is destructive towards the end point that he's trying to reach. He's always looking it's like being playing chess you might sacrifice a piece but you're sacrificing that piece for positioning because you can see that in not in one or two moves but if you're like odin like in eight to ten moves like a proper chess master eight to ten moves time it gives you checkmate it might look like a bad move here but later on you can see the reasons why it was made um and so really odin was the ultimate chess player in that sense he saw the future um, literally and tried to alter it in his favor or in the favor of uh, um, the the Aesir and the Veneer and humanity as a whole because Odin was actually the creator of men and women okay so let's get down to so that's basically Odin as a whole let's get down now to uh, the beginnings of Odin so Odin um, had two brothers, Vili and Vey, and I think Odin's father was Bor. 
he's not really a predominant fe feature within Viking mythology. You know, you have to kind of know of him because he's part of the cosmological stories and stuff. Um, but and his Bor was either his father or his grandfather. But anyway, his grandfather and his father were pure, and I mean pure, ice. Yeah. That was meaning that they were formed from the ice of Niflheim and they did had no corruption within them from the fires of Muselheim. But Odin was half giant. His mother was a giantess, believe it or not. And so Odin did have within him the corruption that comes from the fires that formed the giants. Um, and so he had the fires of Muselheim as well as the ice of, of Niflheim within him did i say the fires in Niflheim? i meant the fires in Muselheim. i don't know what i said it all sounds the same sometimes when you're speaking quickly okay but anyway he had the corruption of Muselheim within him and the goodness of Niflheim within him and so he that is probably why he had such a dual nature he was literally pure half giant so he was capable equally capable of good as well as destruction but he's in a pure example of that overall he was always striving for um uh, for 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 creation ultimately he was the ultimate paragon ultimately of of creation because he was always trying to maintain life for as long as possible not only for himself but for his his realm as a whole um but he had that bad side to him okay now odin Vili and Vey, Vili and Vey were his brothers, were the gods that killed the giant, the very first giant and the very first living thing to be created by Ord Humbler. So at the beginning of Viking cosmology, you had Ord Humbler and Sut. These were literally sort of cosmological entities that have always existed since before time, or at least at the very beginning of time. Um, and they existed whilst Ganunganat still existed. Uh, the great vast of space of nothingness where not even silence exists, right? Um, when the realms were then created, Ord Humbler gave creation and life to all the sort of original gods and godlike beings. Um, and as I say, that then goes down into Odin. Odin was and Vili, and Vili and Vey, his, his two, three brothers. But the very first thing that Ord Humbler created was Emir. And Emir was the first giant. So he was the very first living thing to be created by life itself, ultimately. And he had the corruption of um, um, Niflheim within, uh, sorry, Muselheim within him also. So, and he did actually become sort of taken over by that corruption, so to speak. He was a quite a destructive creature towards the end before Odin, Billy, and Bay killed him. That's why he was destroyed because he got very jealous of the purity of the original Aesir, the purity and the beauty of the original Aesir that were created. Because he was a very ugly, very, um, very, very uh, beastly almost uh, creation. Um, and he was very good at destroying <laughs> put it that way um, but Odin, Vili and Vey killed him and they turned his body into Midgard so Odin is actually responsible for the creation of the world that we live on Midgard is the realm of men Okay, um, and he also is uh, responsible directly by himself without the help of Vili and Vey for the creation of both men and women. So he created Midgard and placed upon Midgard men and women and he created us by carving us from trees. Okay, He carved the very first man from an ash tree and called him Ask which is the old word for ash. Okay, And he created women from, um, from the old uh, Oh my god, I've forgotten. <laughs> this is the problem about doing it without scripts. Sometimes you, you do forget the odd bit. And now I know her name was Embla, and I believe Ash and I believe it's a willow tree, but forgive me if I'm wrong. I will do a video on Ask and Embla, so but I believe that was a willow tree. Okay? And so you've got Ask and Embla. We were the first men and women who were no birch tree. That's it. <laughs> yes, there we go. Woo! Ash and birch, okay? So women were created from birch trees. And Ask and Embla were the very first women, and Embla's just the old word for birch. Okay, or widow. 
<laughs> anyway, they, they, they were the first men and women and from them came obviously all of us. So essentially they were Adam and Eve but in the Viking mythology, okay? So Odin's are responsible for a lot. We owe him a lot with Nordic paganistic beliefs, okay? Because we owe him ourselves, okay? Now Odin was, because of his pursuit of knowledge and wisdom, he was a traveler. He did not really like to stay in one place, even though he was a king of Asgard and he had a duty to sit upon the throne and rule amongst the gods. And that's what Tyr would have done, uh, obviously in Celtic paganism. Um, Odin was not like that. He took regular breaks <laughs> and vacations to Midgard, the realm of men, um, and other and all the other realms actually uh, within within the uh, cosmos um, to pursue his um, expansion of his wisdom and knowledge base. Um, and he got up to a lot of mischief. He would never ever obey by the rules of men, and so actually as a result, he is the He's the patron god, or typically the patron god to both kings and princes and noble men and pe people who rule. But he was also the patron god to a lot of beggars and thieves and vagabonds and stuff also because he did break the rules. And often on his journeys, he would accompany these sort of outlaws, so to speak, and... and do whatever they were doing with them, you know, robbing people and that. He would get involved from time to time. Um, but in, to that, for people who say, well, that's not a very good thing for God to do. One thing I will say, and this is not a Nordic paganistic saying or anything, it's just a saying that I know for myself, um, and it's one that I typically believe is a very good saying to know and understand at least, because it stops you being very judgmental of people who have done things that you think well, are wrong, okay? Um, and that is the path of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. Basically, if you haven't done something, you can't really have a real opinion on it, or at least seen something um, on a, a third-hand basis, but had a, an actual personal experience of it, um, either directly or indirectly. You can't really judge people, and that goes along with, for example, people who... Um, you know, whatever, whatever the life choices are, you can't judge them for it really, unless you've got an experience of it yourself. And at which point you might then say, no, that is a wrong way to live your life. But at least you're doing it from a point of experience rather than a point of ignorance. And a lot of people of modern society, they're very judgmental, they're very easily influenced by social media and the media itself, you know, newspapers, television, things like that. And they're very judgmental on people. Let people live their lives like they want to live. You know, as long as they're not being negative towards you or having a negative impact on your life or the quality of life of those you love, then they're doing no harm. Now, if they are doing harm, then that's when something needs to be done about it. And typically that's where the law comes in and stuff like that. But but generally speaking, stop judging people, okay? And really, that was sort of Odin's sort of attitude. You know, he would experience things because you can't really have a knowledge or understanding of something unless you've experienced it for yourself. And so he was a very travelled very world weary God by the end, but a very wise, knowledgeable one. Um, and ultimately, you know, if you've done something enough times yourself, um, you can predict things even without your magical powers, just simply through the power of pattern recognition. So by living his life that he has, or living his life that he still has, <laughs> whether Ragnarok's come or not, who knows, um, then he, he, you know, at least. He, he'd probably be able to recognise what's happening just by simple pattern recognition, okay, without using magic. And as a result, Odin is a very interesting god because he has so much character behind him. He's such a flawed god, yet at the same time such a paragon of a god because of his flaws, as a direct result of his flaws. He's a perfect example of how you can love someone, not for their good points, but for their bad points, because the bad points lead to their good points in a direct or indirect way. So um, for me, Odin is a very, very interesting god. Now, because of his magic, he did have familiars, okay? Um, he, there were certain key sort of accessory aspects to Odin that, that everyone or typically most people will know about. And that is um, 
Mungi and Hungi, anyway, memory and thought, uh, the two crows that are always, almost always accompanied him, okay? Um, these were not actual living crows, okay? Uh, they were a projection of Odin's own spirit and they were familial, that is, they were magical familiars essentially, but they were familial projections um, due to shamanistic rituals that he practiced. And they allowed him thought and memory to observe everything within his realms that he ruled over when he slept uh, and they would often go out whilst he was awake and come back and tell him things of that things that would happen that are you know literally in other realms so eons of distance away they would tell him about what's happening so he would he was a very perceptive God and he used his shamanistic practices to create these crows that would literally allow him to project his mind across all the realms um, and tell him the information he needed to know to, to act quickly to counter any potential threats. However, these were not the only projections, shamanistic projections, that he was able to create. Um, he actually also created the Valkyries. Now there is some argument that the Valkyries were, I believe the word is Dos, anyway. It, they, they were female, sort of lesser godlike beings that existed within the godlike, the god, the realms of gods um, and just served the more powerful gods. But that is being pretty much disproven. If you read, um, I've, I'll, I will put in the references in the description when I get a time. Uh, if you read the books and the sagas and stuff, it's quite clear that the Valkyries themselves are like the um, the crows that 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 um, um, that Odin had, um, and they were literal familial projections again magical projections of his own spirit essentially and so when the valkyrie which were female always female very warlike you know always carried a shield and a spear and they would come down to the battlefields of men and they would literally take the souls of the men that died bravely in the battlefield that hadn't already been taken by freya and they would bring them directly to the halls of valhalla a lot of the time people think these valkyrie were as i say their own entities but they're actually odin that Odin just as in a different form he was just doing that what he was doing so now so he was actually very able very very able to multitask now Joey and Freki that's something I'll have to confirm for you I think they were the same I think they were familial um, projections and sh uh, shamanistic creations of Odin again and, and f further parts of him uh, those were his two hounds his two dogs but I haven't looked at them in that aspect um, because I have never really really thought about sort of checking them out really are, are they um, a, a product of cedar magic or, or anything along those lines but ultimately what I'm trying to say is they probably were okay and Odin as a result was much more than just himself he was able to access even when he was in Asgard he was always in Midgard and all the other realms, Niflheim, everywhere. He was very, very perceptive. And so his wisdom is far greater than you realise, you know. Um, to be able to do that took a lot of power. And his power, as I say, is very, very subtle in many ways. It's not like Thor being able to hit you with um, Yonder, his hammer, and, and smash you to pieces. <laughs> Odin is a much more subtle god. Um, and I believe, as a result, worthy of being called King of the Asgardians, okay, or King of the Gods. Um, I believe that's really all I have to say. Um, I will just end the, the end of Odin, okay. During Ragnarok, Odin does die. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Um, and Odin knows he's going to die during Ragnarok because he, by this time, has a power of foresight through cedar magic. That's why he traded his right eye, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and it's why he creates the Hall of Valhalla. Valhalla is his recruiting ground, essentially, for the very best of warriors to help him fight Fenrir at the end because he hopes that he can either at least delay, if not prevent, uh, Fenrir, who is this gigantic wolf beast, who is the son of Loki, uh, he he believes he can possibly prevent Fenrir from killing him. Or at least he's going to go down fighting and trying his damnedest best to change his fate, which no one, god, man, beast, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can't change your fate. You can change little bits through cedar magic. 
but you can't change the the beginning and the end point. You're destined to be born on a certain day and you're destined to die on a certain day and that's the Viking belief system and it's fundamental on that. The bits in between can be changed to some extent. Um, and I say for the practice of see the magic, but the beginning and end points, they never change. <laughs> and uh, but but at least Odin goes down like a true Viking warrior in many respects. He goes down fighting with an army. You know he recruits an army over however many thousands of years or millennia or whatever. He has a very powerful, and very large army during Ragnarok, and he he really does try to kill Fenrir. He give, gives it his best and doesn't back away and never runs, even though he knows it's his his day to die. Okay, a true Viking. A, a true uh, Viking God for a Viking people. Lovely. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. I'll, I'll do some more videos soon. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Please put in the comments section anything you might, might want changing or what you think about the videos. Um, I'm always here to try and continually improve your experience of this channel. Okay, bye-bye.